Yeah, we back. Yeah, we back. Now, let's get into it, man. As you can read by the headline. Yes, the Ku Klux Klan, they in the building. They back in the building. Now, if you watch my video that I dropped yesterday, entitled The Truth Exposed, take a look up on the screen, then you remember that one of the local residents had spoken about how they had heard about the Klan riding around town and the neo-nazis rallying as of recently right i'm gonna run that footage i'll be right back look every time some a country moves into another country talk about we're taking over that shit leads to war 100 we all know about about the uh about the neo-nazis just a couple weeks ago being right, down down and uh, i ain't saying that's right and i ain't saying it's wrong but look let's think about it i'm 36 years old and in 36 years that's the first time i've ever seen the neo-nazis rally in our in our city that's the first time I've ever seen the neo-Nazis rally in our, in our city. That's the first time I've ever seen the neo-Nazis rally in our, in our city. My, My mom, mom was telling me she was coming home the other night and seeing a carload of Klan members. Oh, oh, yeah. Klan members? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, so there's full-on war going down right now. That's what it's coming to. Okay. And yeah. it's all going to be against the same people. Klan members. Oh. Oh, oh, yeah. Klan members? Yeah, yes. Oh, so Klan members. Oh, oh, yeah. Klan members? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, so all right, we back. Now, take a look up on the screen. Wittenberg University cancels events due to a shooting threat in Springfield, Ohio. The university says the message targeted Haitian members of the community. Wittenberg University is currently taking extreme precaution following an email that threatened a potential shooting on campus tomorrow, Sunday, September 15th. The message targeted Haitian members of our community. Wittenberg police are cooperating with the Springfield Police Division and the FBI to investigate the threat. All students, faculty, and staff should exercise extreme precaution and be alert to all your surroundings. If you see anything suspicious or have any information about the threat, contact Wittenberg Police Division immediately. All activities are canceled on Sunday, September 15th. And as you can see, take a look up on the screen. I spoke about this in my video the other day. Bomb threats reported at multiple buildings in Springfield, Ohio. Multiple government buildings. Two Springfield public schools have been evacuated and one has been closed due to bomb threats. Haitian families in Ohio under attack as racist claims spread. Haitian immigrants helped revive a struggling Ohio town and then neo-Nazis showed up. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Now, let's take a look at some of the reactions on social media. This person said, I've lived in Springfield, Ohio my entire life. This last week has been pure hell. Bomb threats to multiple buildings daily. Threats to schools and hospitals. Now we have the Proud Boys marching less than a mile away. This person said, MAGA starts a rumor that Haitians are eating cats in Springfield, Ohio. It is proven to be a hoax, but they continue with the narrative. We have bomb threats at schools and hospitals. The Proud Boys are marching. The Klan is passing out literature. Now, like I said, if you haven't watched my last video, The Truth Exposed, go check that out. Classic. But anyways, let's get into it, man. Now, we watching this whole situation spiral out of control to crazy levels. To summarize it, basically, you have a small American town that has been in decline economically and socially over the course of the past 30, 40 years. The jobs have left, the opportunity has left, a lot of the best and brightest, most productive citizens have also left. So over the course of many years, you see the population decline by the thousands. Now, a few years ago during the pandemic, you had some Haitian migrants who qualified for a government program, what they call TPS, Temporary Protected Status. So I'm assuming they came and settled in this area for the low cost of living. Some of them probably originally landed in Florida or New York, and that was like, man, man, forget all that, and ended up somewhere in Springfield, Ohio. Nobody has known about this small community until a few days ago. Even myself, I didn't even know that there were Haitians in Ohio until very recently. But for whatever reason, it has now become the main political conversation, and it has even brought about a resurgence of the Ku Klux Klan. Yes, indeed, the Ku Klux Klan, they back in the building. Now, this is significant for many reasons. Now, when you study the history of the Klan, I would say the top five states that you would deem to be strongholds of the Klan historically, I would say you got to put Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, and then you got to put Louisiana. But throughout American history, you would see migration patterns going from the deep south into the states like the Midwest to Indiana, Illinois, Ohio, things like that. And when you examine a state like Louisiana, a major stronghold of the Klan, right? Everybody knows how Louisiana came about and the large refugee presence, the large refugee population that fled from the island of San Domingue during the Haitian Revolution, the white planter class that left the colony and fled to Louisiana that brought with them their wealth and their memories of the colony and also their ideologies of white supremacy. So when many of those white planters from the island of San Domingue came to the American South, they fit right in with the existing racial dynamics that were already present in the South. 
Some of them also went to Virginia, South Carolina, which was also a major uh, stronghold of the Klan also, and all over the American South. And it became a fabric of American society. Now, we know the Ku Klux Klan came decades after. They came about right after the Civil War. You could say around 1865. And we got to say it simple and plain. The original Ku Klux Klan was originally founded back in the 1860s to target prominent black men. That's what it was. It was created to target and eliminate and assassinate prominent black men who were influential in their communities, prominent in politics, business, etc., etc. You could say the rise of the KKK was in response to the Reconstruction Era. Take a look up on the screen. The Reconstruction Era lasted from the end of the Civil War in 1865 to 1877. Its main focus was bringing the southern states back into full political participation in a union, guaranteeing rights to the former slaves, and defining new relationships between African Americans and whites. Now, during this time, after the Civil War, black men began to hold local office, state office, even federal office. For the first time, blacks could vote and hold positions of power. Now, I'm sure you can see why the original Ku Klux Klan was formed. You have black men like Haram Revels, United States Senator from Mississippi back in 1870. But besides that, you started to see the rise in black sheriffs and black legislators and black mayors and black business leaders. And these men and their families were the ones that were targeted for elimination. Now, before we continue, I want to remind you, this channel runs on your support. If you find value in the content, then I encourage you to contribute and help us keep delivering these in-depth videos. Support the channel in the description box. Let's continue. Back in the mid to late 1800s, you had events like the Colfax Massacre, right? Occurred on Easter Sunday. An estimated 62 to 153 black militiamen were murdered while surrendering to a mob of former Confederate soldiers and members of the Ku Klux Klan. And surprise, surprise, that occurred in the state of Louisiana. As we already know, one of the great bastions of white supremacy. One of the many strongholds of white supremacy throughout the ages. And it's no surprise that the whites from Louisiana, who had a great influence in originally establishing the Ku Klux Klan, that they have direct ancestral connections to the savages and barbarians who held colonial power back in Saint-Omingue. Now let's continue. Now the objective behind the Colfax massacre, like I said, it was to offset the rising influence of prominent black men in the arena of politics and business and wanted to abolish and overthrow the local governments where black men held influence and these men used direct violence and mass murder to regain and maintain control over the region now of course they'll never teach about this in school we already understand you know they skip right over this era in school right it goes from uh, george washington on the field of battle right and then it goes to uh the civil war you know abraham lincoln things like that and then we bunny hop straight to, uh, what's it called? Uh, Martin Luther King. They don't even tell you about the Reconstruction Era. They don't even tell you how after the Civil War, black men began to rise in power and had immense influence in areas like Louisiana, Mississippi, South Carolina. And that's what led to the rise of the Ku Klux Klan. Black men began to own land and engage in commerce, establishing chains and networks of businesses. You started to see a rise of black landowners and black entrepreneurs, black organizations, schools and churches. And as you already know, as you began to establish economic power, you begin to establish political power. And from there, the Ku Klux Klan began running around killing people. You know, put it simple and plain. The white boys started running around killing our people because of that shit. And also during that time, black men had influence over the local law enforcement. You had the black sheriffs, you had the black men in the local militia. So like I said, man, the image of black men going from, you know, the slave plantation before the Civil War and then after the Civil War, this rapid rise, you know, like I said, the enemy began to react violently. And also, like I said, Louisiana was a was a stronghold, was a hotbed for the Klan. And also in Louisiana, you had other organizations like take a look up on the screen, the White League, also known as the White Man's League. Right. And as you can see the image, you know, the white man with the hood, you know, dapping up the, you know, the white man from, you know, from the White League. So they had an alliance and below them, you see, you know, a black man and a black woman crouching down in terror. Take a look up on the screen. The first unit of the White League, founded in 1874, was composed of members of Nash's force, mostly Confederate veterans, who had participated in the Colfax Massacre. It expressed its purpose to defend a hereditary civilization and Christianity menaced by a stupid Africanization. In 1874, White League members murdered Julie Hayden, a 17-year-old African-American girl who was working as a school teacher in Hartsville, Tennessee. After the 1930s, the Klan's numbers dropped. But during its peak, Ohio was believed to have the highest number of Klan members of any state. I repeat, during its peak, 100 years ago, Ohio was believed to have the highest number of Klan members of any state in the United States. Trolliger said an influx of new residents played a part in Klan activity. Hmm. 
Ohio saw a lot of immigrants in the late 19th and early 20th century from Southern and Eastern Europe. And those immigrants were mostly Catholics and Jews. So there were a lot of people, white Protestants, who found that threatening and did not think they were truly American. And in the wake of World War I, they targeted these people. Nationally, the Klan's membership peaked at 4 million in the 20s and the 30s. Ohio's membership was thought to make up about 10% of the larger group. Ku Klux Klan thrived in Westerville, that's another city in Ohio, in the early 1920s. The wave of KKK support that swept central Ohio channeled into nationwide trends of nativism and xenophobia that were in part a reaction against black migration and Eastern European migration. White supremacists targeted people they perceived as a threat to white Protestant moral values. Now, time out, right? Like I mentioned in my last video, these people in the Midwest or wherever they was at, they reacted the same way they reacted to the Haitian migrants. They reacted the same way to the, to the black migrants, to the, and not only that, to even the Eastern European migrants. So this is nothing new, right? This is nothing new. Let's continue. The Akron, Ohio Ku Klux Klan was the focal point for the Summit County chapter of the organization. It represented not only the city with the largest membership in the county, but also in the state of Ohio as a whole. Wait, isn't LeBron James from uh, Akron, Ohio? LeBron James grew up in Klan country. That is crazy. Let's continue. The Klan used a combination of factors to recruit Akronites who felt threatened in their own city. These factors included competition with immigrants and African-American migrant Southerners over factory jobs, housing shortages, and overcrowding within the city. <laughs> Ah, let's continue. Issues like these created a divide among Akronites, among Akronites that the Klan used to its advantage. The ineffective unions of the early 1900s also left local workers feeling voiceless within the workplace. The popularity of the chapter in Akron was based on xenophobia and many local Protestants' feelings of marginalization. The Klan movement reinforced white supremacist attitudes and membership in the Klan served as an assertion of power. The Ku Klux Klan experienced a second major revival in the early 20th century. And by the 1920s, Indiana and Ohio were burgeoning areas for recruitment. The Klan was especially influential in state government. During this time, the Indiana governor was a Klansman and locally the mayor of Newark wore the hooded white robes and the masks. Now, yes indeed, that's something else that would never teach us in these classrooms. For a large part of American history, you had many governors, you had many senators, you had many Presidents, you had many prominent businessmen who had open affiliations with the Klan. Absolutely. This even stretched to the local law enforcement, which is why there were so many atrocities committed that were never, nobody was ever held accountable for. Because the Klan was active from the local law enforcement all the way up to the, to the local senator and the governor, up all the way up to the goddamn president. Guys like Woodrow Wilson, who were openly sympathetic to the Klan, right? And during the presidency of Woodrow Wilson, that was when the United States had invaded Haiti. That's when the U.S. Marines invaded Haiti under the presidency of Woodrow Wilson, who was an open affiliate with the Ku Klux Klan. Now, let's continue. During the 1920s, cultural conflict and modernization helped resuscitate the KKK. Whereas the original KKK was a violent racist organization born in the post-Civil War South, the modern Klan was driven by somewhat different concerns. Many white, lower middle class Protestant Americans in the North and Midwest were fearful that immigrants were changing traditional American culture and they responded with anti-Catholicism and anti-Semitism. The revival of the Klan was inspired by The Birth of a Nation, directed by D.W. Griffith, a violent anti-black blockbuster film of 1915 that promoted the Southern Lost Cause view of the Civil War. The movie was one of the most controversial films ever made and was based on the 1905 novel The Klansman by Thomas Dixon Jr. Unlike the early Klan, the 1920s Klan, although founded in the South, was not exclusively Southern. It boasted support nationwide, primarily in the Midwest. In 1924, more than 40% of all Klan membership could be found in just three states, Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois. But the Klan also secured significant support in Maine, Colorado, and Oregon. It enjoyed a small town base but also appealed to big city Protestants with large chapters in such cities as Chicago, Detroit, Pittsburgh, Dallas, and Indianapolis. In the South, most members were Democrats. In the North, such as Indiana, most were Republicans, though Milwaukee had a fairly large socialist membership. At first, the Klan grew slowly after its 1915 rebirth, but the early 1920s witnessed spectacular growth. Part of this rise may be attributed to the group's enemies. 
The liberal New York World ran a series of articles exposing the Klan's excesses, but these only gave the organization free advertising. The House of Representatives investigated the Klan, but again its membership only grew. On July 4, 1923, an estimated 200,000 Klansmen, women and children gathered in Kokomo, Indiana to hold mass rallies. In August 1925, nearly 40,000 Klansmen, mostly Northerners, paraded down Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, D.C. Now, take a look up on the screen. This has been circulating on social media. A Klan flyer from a, a local Klan chapter that's been making the rounds for the past couple years. As you can see, it says, Foreigners and Haitians out. There is no place in America for this filth. We don't need more police officers. We need mass deportation. A quarter of Springfield is already in poverty. Now, $2 million is being used to care for these beasts of the field. America first. Join us and stand against forced immigration. The Trinity White Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. Now, I see this is a chapter based out of Kentucky that's been um, trying to revive the Ku Klux Klan as of recently. I've even seen them in some local news coverage. Uh, take a look up on the screen when the footage. In other news tonight, people in several central Kentucky communities are alarmed by flyers that turned up in their driveways over the weekend. We have confirmed that the Ku Klux Klan is behind the flyers that were passed out in parts of Lexington, Winchester, Paris, and Mount Sterling. From just a few individual flyers to piles found in driveways and yards, people tell us they are finding flyers that are apparently from the Ku Klux Klan. That's what it's coming to. Okay. And yeah. it's all going to be against the same people. That's what it's coming to. Okay. And yeah. it's all going to be against the same people. My, My mom, mom was telling me she was coming home the other night and seeing a carload of Klan members. Oh, oh, yeah. Klan members? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, there's full on war going down right now. That's what it's coming to. Okay. And yeah. it's all going to be against the same people. Klan members. Oh, oh, yeah. Klan members? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, Klan members? Oh, oh, yeah. Klan members? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, all right, we back. Now, take a look up on the screen. As you can see, in 1927, Donald Trump's father was arrested after a Klan riot in Queens. So, like I said, man, obviously, these are his folks, right? These are his people, right? These are his people. And in the beginning of the video, I tied back the connection to the original founding of the Klan, especially in states like Louisiana, where a large segment of the white population in Louisiana are the descendants of those who are running for their lives during the Haitian Revolution as refugees from the Haitian Revolution. And I'm sure their descendants were integral members of the Ku Klux Klan, right? And as you know, the migration patterns coming from the deep south up into the Midwest, I'm sure some of the descendants have made their way to Ohio also. So, you know, a lot of these guys, I think for them, it's just some like ancestral type of shit going on with them. But as you can see, when we examine the history, they did the same exact thing to several other demographics who came into their neighborhoods, whether it was African-Americans, whether it was European Catholics, whether it was Eastern Europeans, whether it was Jews. So it's not simply just Haitian migrants. You notice a pattern, especially in areas like Ohio. They talked about how 100 years ago, back in Ohio in the 1920s and the 1930s, these same sentiments were used to revive the KKK. So this is nothing new, right? This is nothing new. When you study history, you understand the world around you way better when you understand history. This is why we study history for times like these. So everything begins to make sense, right? And I'm not doing this video to create any panic or start any alarms, but I am doing it to raise awareness. This is not about fear mongering or creating any unnecessary panic. My goal is to simply raise awareness about a potential threat within the community, right? I just want to shine a light on the resurgence of certain, you know, certain problematic groups right like the clan and certain neo-nazi factions that as you can see are operating in the shadows right and they're seeking to harm the haitian community that's all i'm doing right so i'm simply raising awareness so in case anything does happen we understand what's going on we understand who's behind it right it's important to be aware that's what i believe it's important to be aware i don't want you to be afraid right i'm just here to just raise awareness so listen if you are if you're a father if you're a brother make sure that your young ones are not just moving about the neighborhood unprotected Right. They're not really going to approach the men like that. Mano a mano. They don't move like that. Right. They're some cowards. So they're going to target the women. They're going to they're going to target the babies. They're going to target, you know, the young boy, you know, walking home from school. They're going to they're going to target, you know, the young teenage girl walking home from school, walking home from church. Right. Make sure that your family members, wherever they go into the to the uh, grocery store, to the store, to the bus stop, wherever. Make sure like like they like the like the Arabs do. Right. Make sure there's always a man with them. 
make sure there's always a man with them, right? Because they're never going to target the black man one-on-one. Nah, they, they some cowards. They some pussies. So they're always going to target the the, uh, the vulnerable women. They're going to try to assault the women. They're going to try to kill the young, young boys, things like that. So listen, just be on alert. Be on your ones and twos. Be on your P's and Q's, right? It's your boy Nefakari. That's Selene back in the Billy S and D. Support the channel in the description box. Support the album too. And I'm gone. Peace. Yeah, I'm focused on fortification. I'm trying to step out of the matrix. I'm finna be all in your playlist. The haters gon' look and amaze me. I'm taking my time and I'm patient. They tell me I make it look easy. I'm going and they never gon' reach me. I cut off my phone. I'm back on my zone. Yeah, I'm back on my own. The king of my castle and forging my own path. I'm back on the throne. I know they be watching it lately. I'm the gas. These niggas be clones, they selling they soul for currency. I be like, man, just leave me alone. Uh, yeah. Little mama, she look like a dancer. I'm back in my zone, I got hundreds and fifties. They treat me just like I'm a mask. I'm back in the city, I'm feeling imperial, plotting on power expansion. I can't show no love, I got pain in my heart, but I hide it when I'm on the camera. I'm young and I'm raising the standard, and I don't be doing no features. These niggas be talking about killing and robbing, I'm steady, relaxing, and leisure. The spirit of kings, we never gon' die, we taking it back with the leaders. They came and invaded the enemy, raided and put all that shit in museums. Real talk, and I still can't believe it. I pull up and shine on them, I pull up and ride on them, I pull up and flex with the team, you know we gon' style on them. I'm cold like seven degrees whenever I rhyme on them. This shit like co tell Pro, my nigga that's fine on us. Fuck how they feeling, I'm bossed up. Enemy finna get tossed up. Come on, I'm block it and buy it up. Back in the biz, I'm riding up. I'm ready for war and they hiding out. I told the creator, I'm riding they up in the crib and they popping out what? I'm close to the limit, I've been in route Yeah, yeah, yeah Wet on my shoulders, it feel like a boulder Ghost written by the keys, I decoded like high priest Let a foul, don't hold it I'ma get it till they tell me it's over I'ma get it till I'm way up and older Meditated, so I'm close to the guy Pretty soon, we gon' be on the top Yeah, I'm focused on fortification I'm trying to step out of the matrix I'm finna be all in your playlist The haters gon' look and amaze me I'm taking my time and I'm patient They tell me I make it look easy I'm going to